Welcome everyone to the latest interview in a special new series highlighting the informed societies, the largest of the informed communities that each focus on a common area of interest within the study or practice of operations research, data science, analytics, and more. This series provides special insight to each society's unique focus and activities, as well as taking a broader look at what's happening in the communities they represent. In this interview, we'll be discussing the Decision Analysis Society, which is focused on promoting the development and use of logical methods for improving decision-making in public and private enterprise. I'm joined today by Emmanuel Borgonovo, a professor of decision analysis at the Department of Decision Science at Bocconi University and the president of the Informs Decision Analysis Society. Emmanuel, to start us off, could you share how you became involved in the Decision Analysis Society? Thank you, Ashley. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. And also thank you for to Informs to, to organize this uh, initiative. Uh, how I get uh, to be involved with the decision analysis is uh, sort of a long story because now it's several years I got my PhD and actually my interest in decision analysis started during my PhD at MIT where I got, uh, I was lucky to have the courses from Professor Kaufman uh, at MIT and uh, another one at Harvard with Professor James Hammett. And there I started being fascinated with the subject, uh, which uh, uh, I had the luck to study because maybe not, not so many know the, the foundations of this, but I remember going to the MIT library and picking up the book of von Neumann and Morgenstern that where you have the foundation of expected utility theory. I remember studying on the uh, Violet book uh, by Raifa and Kini on multi-criteria decision-making, which is called uh, Decisions with, multi with uh, Trade-offs. And uh, I remember reading a paper uh, connected to my research at MIT about uh, ethics, decision analysis, and public risk, which is uh, a paper I just uh, rediscovered in this days in 1984 written by Ralph Keating, but it's a modern topic, right? You could, you could have this title also nowadays. Then uh, when I came back to uh, Italy, I entered Bocconi University as an assistant professor. I started getting to the INFORMS conference. And there I, I, I met a lot of uh, friends, uh, Manel Bauchels, uh, Victor Jose, Alessandra Cillo, Ilgros Capocain, and they brought me naturally into the Decision Analysis Society. I started with some roles, some volunteer roles in some of the committees, then went to the council, and uh, I liked it so much I never stopped being, uh, being involved. So now what are some of the benefits of belonging to the Decision Analysis Society that you'd like to share with others? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very nice question. And actually, there are so many benefits that uh, if, if I would, were to tell you the entire truth, we would probably stay here a very long time. But uh, so it's first of all, it's a thriving community um, made of excellence. Uh, the scientific basis of uh, decision analysis and all these the disciplines uh, are uh, grounded on the shoulders of, of giants uh, such as Ramsey. We have a Ramsey Medal Award for Neumann, as I was saying, Definetti, Laval, Fishburne. Uh, Peter Fisborn, we just celebrated him during the past. He informed he fortunately passed away, passed away on June uh, 2021. He is both a Ramsey medalist and a von Neumann Awards uh, medalist. And then several others like uh, Howard Raifa, Ron Howard, uh, Bob Winkler, Ralph Keeney, Peter Walker, I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, not say all the entire same, Irvin Laval. So, so many uh, excellent uh, colleagues. For the first, it's uh, uh, to be exposed to uh, a great uh, scientific community, very interesting subjects that go from uh, uh, the behavioral aspects of how we make decisions uh, to the mathematics of decision theory that uh, recently brings, to, brings together decisions and artificial intelligence uh, in a very modern way. Um, so I think for anyone who has a, you know, a broad, broad interest, there is space for, for the applied scientist also uh, from the theoretical one, uh, decision analysis is really a discipline that allows you to uh, have a broad spectrum of, uh, of interests. Uh, the society also offers several awards uh, that really specify this type of uh, multifaceted uh, sides of uh, decision analysis. We have a practice award, uh, we have a best publication award, we have a Ramsey award on the um, career, 
and we have a best student paper award. So different levels also of the academic career. Uh, the society also offers a dedicated journal where uh, of course you can submit your works and also has uh, um, the Chisholm analysis uh, chapters at the main OR journals, operations research, management science, but not only the European Journal of Operational Research, there is a journal called Theory and Decision, the Euro Journal of Decision Processes, the Journal of Risk and Uncertainty. So there are a lot of, of, of journals uh, where uh, our members are also editors or members of the editorial board. And then uh, we have uh, meetings that the society offers, uh, such as the Advances in the Chisholm Analysis Conference that is going to, uh, you know, uh, happened in June 2022. We have an outstanding number of submissions. We will have PhD incubators, exceptional keynote speakers. Uh, so don't miss it, June 22-24th uh, uh, in uh, Darden University. And let me thank uh, Manel Bauchels and uh, Ilgruska Kokain, our colleagues, for organizing the conference in such a, a, an exceptional way. So Emmanuel, you mentioned the journal and the meeting and the awards. Um, are there any other unique initiatives or activities the society has undertaken? Yes, um, to the, the, these years have been peculiar for all of us. We have seen it with the pandemics that has reduced our occasions to meet uh, in person. Then we have launched uh, uh, the Chisholm Analysis webinar series where we have had uh, uh, exceptional speakers uh, and the, the range of topics uh, has been uh, amazing from uh, the gig economy with Yan Chen to the foundations of uh, the season analysis with David Bell, another big name. Uh, Manuel Balchels also talked about models for decision theory. Uh, we also had Yael Grushka Kokain talking about the rescue, which is also, uh, so or her case, uh, so how you view the rescue of the season in, in terms of the season analysis and the rescue is a famous movie, movie or documentary just uh, exited in, in Disney Plus recently. You, know, you, can, you can watch it uh, if you want about this famous rescue of uh, um, young kids uh, in, in Thailand. Um, also, uh, we have uh, the last, our last webinar has been on uh, diversity, equity and inclusion with Catherine De Vries, who is a political economist, uh, very famous in the world, and she has helped us, and we also had as, as guest Susan Martonosi, Anita Koyandi of uh, Informs, uh, who helped us enter into this uh, topic. And in fact, the Decision Analysis Society has recently created a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee uh, that is going to be a permanent committee of the society. And we have uh, four members that, who are volunteers, uh, Alison Risley, Andrea Hoopman, Jun Zhuang, and Gul Okudan Kramer. But the committee is open to any other member of INFORMS. Actually, in our bylaws, uh, uh, we have uh, written that anyone who volunteers uh, for that is automatically a member of the committee. And I, so I think this is also a very important initiative and uh, that, that shows also great cooperation between the Chisholm Analysis Society and INFORMS uh, as a whole. So Emmanuel, I want to mention that I saw the webinar with Yael about the Thai cave rescue and was so uh, moved by it that I, I spoke with her on the Resoundingly Human podcast for an interview on that topic. Um, so that wow. was, encourage everyone to check out that webinar. It was really terrific. Fantastic. Thank you. So I'd love to talk next about um, any networking opportunities the society offers to its members, um, in particular, perhaps for young members or members new to the field. Yes, uh, there are several opportunities. Uh, let's uh, mention, okay, already the advances in the Chisholm Analysis Conference, where we have a dedicated PhD incubator, and where we also received uh, already a, an outstanding number of applications. And this is clearly a, a, an occasion for young scientists uh, to receive, because the, the PhD incubator means also they receive comments from a senior expert on their subject. And this is clearly a great occasion for, for them to maybe even find the new directions for their PhD or improve uh, the thesis and the work. And it's very helpful to provide guidance uh, uh, at the level where they are in their academic career. And for young, uh, um, young students, we also have said that we have the best paper award for students. So it's, a, it's a, an award for students who 
submit a paper, a paper written in majority. So the author who has written the majority of the paper is to be a student, can be a master of science student, even a bachelor student, a PhD student also. And uh, uh, we have a, a, a dedicated PhD webinar series parallel to the, our webinar series that was organized by uh, Enrico Diecidue and Matthias Seifert, dedicated to the work of uh, PhD students. We have a mentorship program with lunches uh, with uh, you know, members that have already been in, so they, they favor a meeting between younger scientists and older scientists who are already members of the Decision Analysis Society for, uh, for some years. But there are also uh, some informal uh, occasions to meet. For instance, the business meeting that we have, uh, it's a fantastic occasion, uh, the society business meeting during the INFORMS annual meeting. It's informal, uh, very good atmosphere, and it is a very nice networking uh, um, occasion. Uh, our uh, secretary, Dharma Kwon, uh, was just talking to him. And actually, let me also thank the council member who helped me also in answering uh, these questions. Dharma Kwon was also telling me that he met several of the people uh, there who then became his colleagues uh, on papers during the business meeting or the award session. Of the, uh, of the community. And actually then these people are likely also to be the people who wrote letters for him. As you know, receiving letters for young scientists uh, is important then to get tenure or promotion during their career. And these networking opportunities are amazing. Also you get the, the possibility to study, uh, to, so, sorry, to meet the people uh, of the papers, of the books, of uh, uh, the works that you studied during your thesis. This was my case. Uh, for instance, I was mentioning before Ralph Keeney, and uh, so I, I, I remember when I met him in person after having studied so, so, so many works of, uh, of him. Not only, but we have a newsletter, and uh, the newsletter, uh, our editor, Andrea Hoopman, she uh, had this uh, innovative initiative of a research column uh, done by a PhD student who writes this column talking about uh, his research and his uh, uh, field of uh, interest. So the, the topic in which he's interested and in his work on which he is working during his PhD. So in addition, are there any volunteer opportunities that are available within the society? All our roles are for volunteers. Um, so you can volunteer and run for any uh, position at the society, run for president, uh, run for so president elect actually, uh, then you can run for council. We run elections uh, of council every year and every two years for the president. We have uh, volunteers, so you can volunteer at any time for the diversity, equity and inclusion committee. Uh, you can volunteer at any time for every of our awards committees. So the best publication award, the practice award, the best student paper award, and uh, the Ramsey award. If you want to either be chair of the committee or if you want to be in the jury of any of these, uh, you just have to drop me an email or any of our leadership uh, members an email and uh, we are more than happy to, to welcome you. And uh, then we have roles, uh, okay, also as session chairs for the INFORMS annual meeting in the organizing committee of the ADA uh, conference. So now looking more broadly at the field of decision analysis, could you share some developing trends? Yes, there are many. Uh, one of the things that uh, maybe it's worth uh, uh, recalling is that uh, decisions uh, is an activity that we have to make every day. Um, I remember reading some, some papers some, some time ago that said that we take at least 150 quote unquote decisions per day. And they go from you know, choosing which type of coffee you drink in the morning to something that can more severely affect your life, like your course of study or if you get married. And uh, decisions, uh, you, if you're a manager, for instance, your life is making decisions. So. The, the, the trend in the future are, well, we should try and make better decisions all over, right? Improve our decision process, being it in an organization for my personal, for deciding my savings, for managing my life. Finding so, so subjects that are particularly level, relevant and developing trends uh, 
um, it's not easy, right? So it's, it's very broad, but I could single out some and I'm sure I'm forgetting many. One is uh, the uh, diversity, equity and inclusion. So the inclusion of these values in the objectives of decision making for institutions, uh, firms and individuals. And as part of this is sustainability is also another of the values that you want to, to make and which is surely essential for our world. How can we make better decisions that take also into account, let's say, not only profit, but the sustainability of our endeavors. Uh, another huge topic is the intersections between artificial intelligence and decision making. Uh, we use uh, tools that come from uh, artificial intelligence to make decisions. We have seen many ethical issues that uh, appear when you use these tools. How can we moderate or how can we really integrate artificial intelligence in uh, decision making so that to account always for the say, human aspects of decision analysis. Okay? So not let an algorithm decide independently of us how to integrate it. How do people react to decisions suggested by machines? Uh, there are studies in, in our disciplines that show that people receiving medical advice do not want this advice to be communicated solely by an algorithm. Uh, there has to be the doctor who communicates. And actually, if you just tell the people this has come from the algorithm, this has come from the doctor, they will not accept the algorithm. Maybe times are changing now. Uh, we have a more widespread uh, inclusion of algorithms, but how to make better decisions with algorithms is still a, a broad uh, research subject. Another research subject is application of decision analysis methods for cybersecurity, uh, which, is, which brings you back to the intersection of game theory with also uh, decision analysis and, and uh, lack of information, so deciding under uncertainty. Public policy, uh, issues related to sustainability. Uh, we have seen decision making for crises like uh, epidemiology, medical decision making, agency or agent theory also is, is another research topic. And uh, uh, also, let's say, excellence in decision making in organizations. And then uh, all the intersection between psychology and uh, uh, behavioral aspects of decision making. Uh, just a few. So where do you see these new trends leading in the next five to 10 years? Well, uh, it's, it's, uh, so it's not easy to see where they go, but uh, I hope they will go in the direction of helping us in solving complex societal problems uh, in including all these values of sustainability, diversity, equity, and inclusion in our decision making. And uh, uh, especially in uh, setting up the principle that uh, no decision can be taken lightly. Okay, and uh, so you need excellence in decision making and uh, uh, decision analysis is the discipline that allows you to exactly model the decision analysis process. Well, model does not only mean having a mathematical model, but to um, create the right steps uh, for excellency in decision making. So how to, to make good decisions. We will have a, a webinar with two of our uh, esteemed colleagues, Ralph Kinney and Johannes Siebert uh, on, uh, on March uh, 16, talking about how to make good decisions. So against this backdrop of what's happening in the field as a whole, what role does the Decision Analysis Society play? Exactly, so uh, the Decision Analysis Society is the place of uh, where you find uh, the people, uh, the individuals who have studied this, uh, this field in, in depth and uh, uh, who can be the best, uh, say, advisor, either reading their scientific papers or getting to know them, uh, talking with them about how to structure a decision problem, how to model a decision problem, how to make decisions, how to improve the decision-making process within an organization. Uh, being it a firm and inter so private uh, venture or a public institution. And uh, one important aspect of decision of the decision analysis society is that it, decision analysis as a discipline can be used to create the interconnection between different disciplines or disciplines that seem apart, right? So from artificial intelligence, mathematics of optimization, statistics, simulation and how do you integrate all this in a decision process that's uh, that's where uh, decision analysis can help also with the theoretic foundations because 
we know that there may not be the perfect machine learning model, right? Then, then these type of decisions that we are making, if not taken lightly, they are decisions under uncertainty, actually decisions under model uncertainty. And so you will need to pick up the book uh, in the decision analysis shelf that tells you about how to make decisions integrating these uh, different uh, components and different aspects. So aside uh, the possibility of uh, connecting researchers in a variety of fields, uh, we know that uh, several times we, we decide based on just if it's done expected values. Some other times we just use point values, but then we need to integrate uncertainty. We also need to integrate preferences of decision makers regarding uncertainty or in general preferences of the decision makers when they make a decision. And this required, for instance, value focused thinking required putting together multiple criteria, so multi-criteria decision analysis. And uh, it is where the expertise of uh, decision analysts, so the members of our society can help. Emmanuel, it has truly been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for sharing a special look inside the Decision Analysis Society and its value to its members. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Informs, for having me here. And stay tuned for more interviews highlighting the Informs sections and societies throughout the coming year.